Now we are going to create the VHDL model uh, in a tool called Model Sim and actually run a functional simulation to verify its accuracy. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do when we start using Model Sim is we want to create a folder so that we can keep all of our designs in. So I'm going to go ahead and create a folder on my desktop that I'll work in. And I'll say File New Folder. And I'm just going to call this VHDL for now. And underneath this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a folder for every simulation. Okay, every simulation we do, we need to have its own folder and also its own uh, project in Model Sim. So let me go ahead and do this. I'm going to do a new, let's see, new folder, and in here I'm going to call this System and Three. Okay, so now within this folder, two files are going to go in here. One is going to be the test bench, and one of them, one is going to be the design that I actually create. Okay, so let's go get the test bench. So I go out to Desire to Learn, and I go ahead and look down here where I have it linked, and I have this link, System and Three underscore Test Bench, and go ahead and right click and say Save Link As, and it'll ask you where to put it. So what I want to do is I want to browse to. It's a little big here. I'm going to browse to VHDL System Man 3 and I'll save. Okay, and then let's make sure that we got it. So I go back in here, System Man 3, and I got my test bench in there. Okay, great. So now we're ready to actually fire up Model Sim. So go ahead and fire up the tool, Model Sim, and what you'll see is this window comes up. All right, so the first step is we're going to create a new project. So we go File. Let me move this over so you can see it. Let's go File, New, and I'm going to say Project. And I'm going to I'm going to browse to my location of where I just created that folder. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to go, I, I have it on the desktop, VHDL, System Man 3, and I browse to that, double click on that last folder and say OK. And then I'm going to call it just capital letters project okay so that way when I go look at my files I know exactly which file is the project file and it's gonna come up and say do you want to add a new file do you want to uh, uh, add an existing file and the first thing I want to do is I want to add an existing file because I want to add my test match so when you say add it's already in the right location so go ahead and click on the test match and say okay and you'll see that it pops up in your project tab and then we're gonna create a new file and this is a blank file that we're gonna create and this is going to be our design. So I'm going to call this system and three and by default it's going to make it a VHDL file type and I go ahead and say okay and I'm off and running. Okay so now if I look at these if I double click on one of them it's going to bring up an editor within the model sim tool <clears throat> so you can see that this uh, our design is blank right now. If I double click on the test bench you'll see that there is VHDL in here. Okay, and You don't need to know what this is. This is provided for you because we haven't gotten to the point where we can create our own test benches. So, <clears throat> But it's, it's good to just see what VHDL looks like. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our system. All right, so we already know what we're trying to do. We're creating the system and three and gate. So let's type it out. So I'm going to go entity, and notice that when you type in a keyword, uh, it'll turn red. And so I say entity system and three is, and let's do our port definition. So I go port A, B, C, and then I give it a mode of in and a type bit, semicolon. And then I have an output F, and it's a mode out, type bit, close the parentheses, semicolon, and entity. Okay, so now I've created my entity. I've declared the inputs and outputs. And then I'm going to do architecture. And I'm going to call my architecture system and three underscore arc. And that's just something I do. I always put underscore arc so that I know it's the unique architecture name. And then we'll say of, and then we have to link it to the entity that we have. So system and three, and then I do keyword is. I come down here, I say begin. And now I model my functionality. And in this this example, let's just do a concurrent signal assignment where I say A ended with B and it was C. So very simple. And then I end architecture. <clears throat> and if I make mistakes on here, if I make syntax errors, uh, I'll catch it when I compile. But I'm ready to now save my file. And if you look at down here on this little tab, you'll notice there's an asterisk. It's at this asterisk says that I, I need to save my file. Okay, So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to save and notice that asterisk goes away. To compile, I come over to here and I right click on it and I say compile selected and it said I had a failure. Okay, So I have a failure in here and I need to go figure out what it was. So what I'm going to do is I double click on it and it says near 
line two near this unexpected identifier. If I double click on there, I will be able, it'll highlight for me where the error is. So I noticed that I had an extra comma in there. So it, it found that error. Okay, so great. So I have to make sure that it compiles correctly. So I go compile, select it, and now it's successful. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and compile the test bench, and the test bench will always compile successfully because it's been already verified. And I'm done with my design. So now what I want to do is I want to simulate it. So to simulate, you go over to your library tab, and there's a folder called work. Work is where everything is compiled into. So under here, you're going to see these two compiled entities, uh, System and 3 and System and 3 test bench. To load the simulation, we always load it at the topmost level, which is the test bench. Uh, level because the system or the device under test that you just created is called from the test bench. So I go ahead and just double click on that and it's going to load the simulation and what will happen is the windows will start flashing and it'll resize windows and all this sort of stuff. So wait, give it a second before it starts flashing or until it stops flashing uh, and then I'll drag, drag this back over and put it right there. And here we go. Okay, so now a couple of things have happened. A, a new tab has been created called Wave, <clears throat> and the Wave is where our waveforms are going to be displayed. And we also have a couple new uh, subwindows come up. One is Objects and Processes. So the Objects is where we're going to load our signals onto the waveform. So go ahead and right click in here and say Add to wave all signals in region and the region will give you the very topmost signals and now notice that we have uh, A, B, C and F and what we can do is simulate and look at these waveforms <clears throat> now it, model sim by default you'll probably notice on yours that your background is black if you wanted to change your color scheme so that you, you know you can do screenshots and print them or something like that you can always change your color scheme by going up under uh, tools and then edit preferences and this gives you a bunch of preferences on how you set up model sim and if you come down into wave window you can change all these different colors uh, so I changed my background to, to white and then I did blue lines <clears throat> and that allows me to print it a little bit easier but you can leave it black for for what you've done okay so I'm now ready to simulate and all I need to do is tell it for how long I want to simulate for <clears throat> and then hit this button here run so all of these simulations run on you know 80 to 100 nanoseconds and usually since you didn't design the test bench I'll tell you how long to run it so let's go ahead and run this for 80 nanoseconds and hit go <clears throat> okay so it ran notice there's lines here uh, but they're all flat lined the reason is is because it'll always zoom to the very end of the simulation so what we want to do is we want to zoom full so right click on this and say zoom full Full, and here we go. <clears throat> so take a look at it. I'm gonna right. I'm gonna left click and hold the cursor down, and I can move it along here, and it'll actually tell me the values as I go along. But you can see right away that it's working. So as I move through here, you see, you know, A, B, C over here is zero 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 one zero one zero zero one one, and it moves all the way through all eight possible input codes, and it only asserts for the last one. So it's functioning as we expected. Another way to view this, which is really neat, is if I come over here and I hold down the shift key, or I click on A and I hold the shift and I go down and click on C, it selects them all. If I right click and say combine signals, <clears throat> I can actually create a uh, display vector and I'm going to call it ABC and then I say OK. And it'll actually uh, concatenate these into this this vector. It's not creating a vector in your VHDL, it's just the way that it's displayed. And this is actually uh, a much easier way to see if it's functioning. So I can come in here and I can actually see all ABC as a 3-bit vector. Okay, so the simulation worked and we walked all the way through it. Now if you want to close out of here, what you do is you have a simulation running. Everything is great. If you wanted to, to document this, you could do a screenshot of just this window using a SNP or you know print screen. But I want to get out of here. So I'm going to go simulate and simulation and that's going to quit my simulation. <clears throat> okay. Now I'm going to go ahead, I have to close my text files or my VHDL files and now I'm going to come on the project tab and I'm going to go uh, close project and it'll say do you want to close? Yes. And now you're back to, it keeps the the work folder is full but when you create a new folder it'll create a new work form. And that is it. So we have successfully designed a VHDL model for our system and three and we ran a simulation using these test bench provided from start to finish. Okay.